Hello and welcome to the training log for the week of February 20th, 2023. I just completed the second month of rip and tear, which means I'm two thirds away from my bulk. I've got a couple PRs and some other things to talk about this week, so let's get to it. During the second or maybe the third week of the program when I had a small back injury, I decided to make a slight change to the program in that I was going to introduce box squatting instead of regular squatting with the plan of lowering the box a little bit each week until I reach what I consider parallel. I prefer squatting to a box in general to free squats for a couple of reasons. One is knowing exactly how deep I'm going every time. There's no inconsistency in depth as the sets get harder or as the weight gets heavier. I know exactly how deep I've gone, especially when I'm trying to specifically go not quite too depth. It's very easy to go in plan to go a little bit high and slowly cheat that into slightly higher and slightly higher until you've barely done a squat. And with a set object there to uh, kind of tell you when you've hit your desired depth, there's no way to do that. I've really liked this approach of starting with slightly higher squats and lowering them over time. Uh, for one, it helped build confidence in the movement, and for two, it did help me stay slightly more bright in my squats. Granted, you'll see here in these PRs, I do kind of end up a bit more hunched over, but I am still a bit more squat-like than some of my worst offenses of Good Morning Quest have been in the past. And obviously this approach worked because on Wednesday I hit a PR of 635, which was that video you just saw, and then right after that I hit a PR of 655, which is this video. This is a 30 pound PR over my previous uh, best rep, and yeah, still pretty good morning-y, but if I can do that with 30 more pounds, then something's obviously improved, so. As far as I'm concerned, this is a satisfactory outcome for squats for this program, so from this point forward I'm just going to play it by ER, I don't have any other specific plans for squats. Uh, and on Wednesday, even though I hit the squat PR, I still had to finish all the bench sets. So these are pretty good. These were 30, 35 for fours, and I was feeling very tired. I just hit a big squat PR, but I was able to get all my reps and sets without wrist straps, without uh, apple sleeves, and with fairly minimal difficulty. So that's also a pretty good sign. Speaking of bench press, I hit a literal bench press PR this week of 315. Uh, this is something I had done before with 225 and then 295, but I wanted to come back for the even three plates, which conveniently this bench weighs 45 pounds, or rather 43.6 pounds, but you know, close enough when who's counting. So I was able to load up three plates worth of bumpers and eventually get my 315 bench press PR. Now obviously there were a lot of fails going up to that because this is essentially a test of balance and if you lose that balance a little bit it compounds because the weight is significantly above you so if it starts to go it's just going to keep going and you're going to dump all the plates. But as they are rubber bumper plates this doesn't really matter because it's a rubber plate falling less than a foot and it's hitting you in the belly. It's not a big deal. It's not going to cause an injury. And if it does cause you an injury you should go seek medical attention for your fragile underdeveloped bones. But believe it or not, this wasn't the only lift I did this week that concerned all the glass crotches. I finally got my silver dollar deadlift sleeve attachments in the mail after uh, many, many months of wanting them. The first fabricator I tried to get a hold of just never responded to my desire to buy them for like two and a half months. And then uh, the second guy replied right away, but he had some issues with a uh, winter storm and then a machine going out and... Who knows, what else, but his three to four week shipping time went to like 10 weeks, but I finally got them and that's what matters. Silver dollar deadlift attachments basically mimic the silver dollar deadlift from the uh, old world strongest man competitions. It elevates the bar to 18 inches and it also displaces the majority of the weight out to the very end so you get a bar that bends quite a bit lifted from an elevated position so it's much easier than a typical deadlift. I decided to break them in with a candy lift which is an 18 inch Jefferson deadlift. And you've been watching all my warm-ups from 575 up to this, which is 1205. Um, so I had to actually stand on some plates for this last pull because the bar was bending so much that I was concerned that the weight wouldn't actually fully leave the ground. So definitely going to need to use a more stiff bar for this next time. But as a first attempt, it's pretty good to get up to 1,200 pounds, even if a lot of that is just pulling out slack. But the plates fully leave the ground. I got locked out, and that's all that really matters. And again, to assuage concern, uh, that bar is not going to break and give me a vasectomy. It's going to bend, if anything. You have to have a really shitty steel bar for it to actually physically break, and I don't buy really shitty steel bars, so. A little bit shorter this week, mostly because I just didn't film very much, so I don't have anything else to put in this video. Uh, let me know if you prefer the shorter versus longer. I can certainly cut down future videos if the shorter time is better for you. Uh, I'll see you guys next week.